Here we are, Internet. Hello. We are here for Chapter 20 of TikTok of Oz. It is the eighth book in the Oz series. Fourteen books in total. We are on Chapter 20 tonight, which means Chapter 21 will be tomorrow, Tuesday. 22 Wednesday, 23 Thursday, 24 Friday. Saturday will be Chapter 25, which is the last chapter of this book. There's 25 chapters in this book. Which means on Sunday we will start Book 9. Crazy as that sounds of the Oz series. That's right over here. It's called The Scarecrow of Oz. Um, apparently featuring the Scarecrow. Though, I'll be honest, this book is focused on everybody but TikTok, it feels like. Like, you know, I know more about Shaggy Man and Polychrome in this book than I know about TikTok. I don't know. It's weird. But let's read Chapter 20. Quacks Quietly Quits. Lots of hues to pronounce in that title. I'll be glad when Quox quietly quits because I'm really getting tired of doing his voice. Alright. When the chief gnomes assembled before their new king, they joyfully saluted him and promised to obey his commands. But when Calico questioned them, none knew the way to the metal forest, although all had assisted in its making. So the king instructed them to search carefully for one of the passages and to bring him the news if, as soon as they had found it. Meantime, Quox had managed to back out of the rocky corridor and so regain the open air in his old station on the mountainside, and there he lay upon the rocks, sound asleep, until the next day. The others of the party were all given as good a room as the caverns of the gnomes afforded, for King Calico felt that he was indebted to them for his promotion and was anxious to be as hospitable as he could. Much wonderment had been caused by the absolute disappearance of the sixteen officers of Ugaboo and their queen. Not a gnome had seen them, nor were they discovered during the search for the passages leading to the metal forest. Perhaps no one was unhappy over their loss, but all were curious to know what had become of them. I have a theory. <coughs> that the random tunnel they found that got them out of that pit was one of the secret tunnels to the magic forest, or the metal forest. What do you think? I think they're going to stumble upon the, the brother in the metal forest before anybody else does. What do you think? That's, that's my... My pet theory here. We'll find out. On the next day, when our friends went to visit the dragon, Quack said to them, well, I must now bid you goodbye, for my mission here is finished, and I must depart for the other side of the world where I belong. Will he go through the tube again? asked Betsy. Do be sure, but it will be a lonely trip this time with no one to talk to. And I cannot invite any of you to go with me. Therefore, as soon as I slide into the hole, I shall go to sleep. When I pop out the other end, I'll wake up at home. They thanked the dragon for befriending them, and wished him a pleasant journey. Also, they sent their thanks to the great Jinjin, whose just condemnation of Regido had served their interests so well. Then Quox yawned and stretched himself and ambled over to the tube, into which he slid head foremost and disappeared. <sighs> Um, apparently I'm as tired as Quox. They really felt as if they had lost a friend, for the dragon had been both kind and sociable during their brief acquaintance with him. But they knew it was his duty to return to his own country, so they went back to the caverns to renew the search for the hidden passages that led to the forest. But for three days, all efforts to find them proved in vain. It was Polychrome's custom to go every day to the mountain and watch for her father, the Rainbow for she was growing tired with wandering upon the earth and longed to rejoin her sisters in the sky palaces. And on the third day, while she sat motionless upon a point of rock, whom should she, whom should she slyly, whom should she see slyly creeping up the mountain but Regido? The former king looked very forlorn. His clothes were soiled and torn, and he had no sandals upon his feet or hat upon his head. Having left his crown and scepter behind when he fled, the old gnome no longer seemed kingly, but more like a beggar man. Several times had Regido crept up to the mouth of the caverns, only to find the six eggs still on guard. He knew quite well that he must accept his fate and become a homeless wanderer. But his chief regret now was that he had neglected to fill his pockets with gold and jewels. He was aware that a wanderer with wealth at his command would fare much better than one who was a pauper. So he still loitered around the caverns wherein he knew so much treasure was stored, hoping for a chance to fill his pockets. That was how he came to recollect the metal forest. 
Aha, he said to himself, I alone know the way to that forest, and once there I can fill my pockets with the finest jewels in all the world. He glanced at his pockets and was grieved to find them so small. Perhaps they might be enlarged so that they would hold more. He knew of a poor woman who lived in a cottage at the foot of the mountain. So he went to her and begged her to sew pockets all over his robe, paying her with the gift of a diamond ring which he had worn upon his finger. The woman was delighted to possess so valuable a ring, and she sewed so many pockets on Regito's robe as, he, as she possibly could. She sewed as many pockets on Regito's robe as she possibly could. Then he returned up the mountain, and, after gazing cautiously around to make sure he was not observed, he touched a spring in a rock, and it swung slowly backward, disclosing a broad passageway. This he entered, swinging the rock in place behind him. However, Regito had failed to look as carefully as he might have done, for Polychrome was seated only a little distance off, and her clear eyes marked exactly the manner in which Regito had released the hidden spring. So she rose and hurried into the cavern, where she told Calico and her friends of her discovery. I've no doubt that that is the way to the metal forest, exclaimed Shaggy. Come, let us follow Regito at once and rescue my poor brother. They agreed to this, and King Calico called together a band of gnomes to assist them by carrying torches to light their way. The metal forest has a brilliant light of its own, said he, but the passage across the valley is likely to be dark. Polychrome easily found the rock and touched the spring, so in less than an hour after Regito had entered, they were all in the passage and following swiftly after the former king. Uh, he means to rob the forest, I'm sure, said Calico. But he will find he is no longer of any account in this kingdom, and I will have my gnomes throw him out. Well, then please throw him as hard as you can, said Betsy, for he deserves it. I don't mind an honest out-and-out -out enemy who fights square, but charging girls into changing girls into fiddles and order them to put into slimy caves is mean and tricky, and Regito doesn't deserve any sympathy. But you'll have to t let him take as much treasure as he can get in his pockets, Calico. Yes, the Jinjin said so, but he won't take. But he won't miss it much. Th but we won't miss it much. There is more treasure in the metal forest than a million gnomes could carry in their pockets. It was not difficult to walk through this passage, especially when the torches lighted the way. So they made good progress, but it proved to be a long distance, and Betsy had tired herself with walking and was seated upon the back of the mule when the passage made a sharp turn and a wonderful and glorious light burst upon them. The next moment they were all standing upon the edge of the marvelous metal forest. It lay under mountain and occupied a great domed cavern, the roof of which was higher than a church steeple. In this space the industrious gnomes had built, during many years of labor, the most beautiful forest in the world. The trees, trunks, branches, and leaves were all of solid gold, while the bushes and underbrush were formed of filigree silver, virgin and pure. The trees towered as high as natural live oaks do, and were of exquisite workmanship. On the ground were thickly strewn precious gems of every hue and size, while here and there among the trees... You need to go to sleep? You need to go to bed? Knock it off, please. Here and there among the trees were pebbled with cut diamonds of the clearest water. Taken all together, more treasure was gathered in the metal forest than, in, than is contained in all the rest of the world if we accept the land of Oz, where perhaps its value is equal in the famous Emerald City. Our friends were so amazed at the sight, for a while they stood gazing in silent wonder. Then Shaggy exclaimed, My brother, my dear lost brother, is he indeed a prisoner in this place? Yes, replied Calico, the ugly one has been here for two or three years, to my positive knowledge. Uh, but what could he find to eat? inquired Betsy. It's an awfully small, swell place to live in, but one can't breakfast on rubies or diamonds or even gold. Uh, one doesn't need to, my dear, Calico assured her. The metal forest does not fill all of this great cavern by any means. Beyond those gold and silver trees are other trees of the real sort, which bear foods which are very nice to eat. Let us walk in that direction, for I am quite sure we will find Shaggy's brother in that part of the cavern rather than in this. So they began to tramp over the diamond-pebbled paths, and at every step they were more and more bewildered by the wondrous beauty of the golden trees with their glittering foliage. Suddenly they heard a scream, jewels scattered in every direction as someone hidden among the bushes scampered away before them. Then a loud voice cried, HALT! And there was the sound of a struggle. Oh, that is the end of chapter 20, Quox Quietly Quits. 
tomorrow night, right here, 8 o'clock, Facebook Live, we will read chapter 21, A Bashful Brother. Might we find Cal uh, Shaggy Man's ugly brother? It seems possible. Good night, everyone. I'll talk to you tomorrow.